<laughs> well, let's see. Gil is in the back getting everything ready. I'll go grab some food I've ordered. They only agreed to work on New Year's if I went and picked it up myself. Are you alright? Oh yeah, I forgot. Gabby. She's so stressed out about that. I'm scared. Gabby will show up at any minute. Relax. Everything will be alright. I can assure you of that. Drink something. Maybe that will cheer you up. Maybe. I'll leave you for a bit, but keep your chin up. If you get through this, I'll give you... I don't know. A hug. Does that work? A hug? A big one. A reward for after everything's said and done. Gotta go. You can do it. Right. Everything's fine. You've been avoiding this for all these years, now it's time to face it head on. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything will be better after I talk to Gabby. Boss might even give me a hug. I'm okay. Um, hello? Not okay! Not okay! Gabby. Come in. Excuse me. Welcome to Valha. Hey. You talk first. No, I. Well. Some days ago I got a letter. And an even odder than getting that letter is the fact that it was from your sister. A what? My sister sent you a letter. That's the first I've heard of it. What did it say? I don't know. I never opened it. At least not until now. Huh? I figured I should read it with you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's read it. I think I probably said this before, but I really like Gabby's outfit design. Sorry. Was that it? Just... just that? Yep. Isn't there anything else in the letter? Maybe on the back? This is just like your sister. I spent days worried about this letter, not wanting to open it for fear of what it might contain. I lost sleep and appetite thinking about it. And after all those worries, after all those problems, after all these years not talking to her, she sends me a letter. A letter of all things. And she just says, sorry. <laughs> you could just... Sorry for all of that, Jill. Ah, uh, now I'm angry. <laughs> Are you laughing? Sorry, I just... I just remember all the times my sister provoked you that way. Like that time where she gave you chocolates labeled 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> During Valentine's Day. And you were so angry about the lack of a 3. And that time when you left an unopened beer bottle on the table, and she sneakily, sneakily opened it and took a sip. She didn't tell you that she did it, and you were confused all day long. She always bragged that she knew me like the back of her hand. If the letter was supposed to make me angry like that, I guess I had all, she had all the right to brag. Maybe she was being sincere, though? She did express to me that she was sorry on more than one occasion. She did? You told me she dies from the localized nanomachine rejection, right? In her heart, yeah. Ow, god, that... That's not cool. Instead of the massive rejection that always makes the news, her case was more focused. They usually amputate or replace the part and call it. It's a little hard to do that with someone's heart, though. But organs are different. The condition makes her susceptible to transplant rejections. Not to mention artificial hearts and genetic treatments are out of the question. Yep. Thing is, apparently she suffered that since she was 18. <clears throat> wow. Kept it a secret from everyone. I wonder why, though. Why? I don't know. I was too angry to learn that she hid it. Why didn't she tell me? Was it to avoid worrying me? Was she ashamed? What was it? Wait, how did she live so normally, then? 
She had to use a serum, shots near her heart, every three days. Apparently the serum burns, really bad. The shot even left a nasty mark where she had to apply them. So the thing near her left breast was a birthmark. Huh. And the shot in the rejection is what ended up killing her. The nanomachine rejection was what ended up killing her, but they couldn't find what made her so vulnerable. Doctor said she might have missed a shot, or the shots made her other defenses grow weaker. The condition could have just gone nuts out of nowhere, but... Or maybe it was blood pressure. Maybe it was a regular heart attack and the rejection acted afterwards. They don't know. She kept it a secret from everyone, so no one knows. <clears throat> maybe if she had told me about it, I could have helped her. Maybe she'd still be alive. Oh. Well, maybe she wouldn't have faced it alone instead of just dying in her sleep. Oh. Well, thinking about what ifs won't bring her back. Huh? I spent so much time hammering myself with what ifs after you told me she died. Oh yeah, that was that was a rough patch. What if I waited to cool down a bit back then? What if I just swallowed my fears at that very moment? What if I had apologized earlier? What if I had given a, given a chance to bring to the research institution thing back then? And the amount of just increased threefold after I lashed out at you the other day. But today I realized something. Having such regrets with the dead is a hollow effort. You're alive, you're here, you can make amends with you, but you can't make amends with the dead. I can't apologize her to like her like I can apologize to you right now. Lenore, she's she's resting now. She's just resting after having that heart condition all these years. She didn't have to face it alone, though, if she only... So, let's celebrate her life and achievements. If we are to mourn, let's mourn her together. If we are to honor her, we'll do it together. Together. Lenora was a fun-loving person. The best part we can do is try to lighten up, even if it's only for a moment. I need to ask, though, did she really start to complain about chest pains shortly after I left? No. Oh. She didn't get visibly worse after you left or anything. Everything was actually too sudden. She did complain about chest pains from time to time, but that goes away. That actually goes way back before you left. Back then, we thought it was just acid reflux or something. I even blamed her death on you. I was just too angry back then, and part of me just wanted to blame it on someone or something. And you didn't deserve that. Sorry. Hey, I'm sorry too. We both have things to apologize for, don't think too much about it. I should have been mature and not shouted at you either, so... Let's just call it all that water under the bridge, shall we? Are you sure? Of course. So how did you find me, exactly? Eh, um... Well, have you heard of a message board called Danger You? Yeah, we read it every day before work. Well, the truth is that I visit it from time to time. And the other day I read a thread that discussed the bar. And the description of the bartender sounded just like you. Huh. Are you mad? No, not mad, more like dumbfounded. Hey, Jill, can you tell me what the problem was back then? What sparked that fight? Weren't you happy with my sister? Well... Back then, I didn't know what to do with myself after I graduated college. I went in and pretty much hated my last couple of years there. It's not that far-fetched to think that I only tolerated being there because your sister was with me. Had she stopped supporting my studies, I would have quit right then and there. And then after graduating, I got a good job offer that she accepted on my behalf in no time. She kept saying it was the best for my future, but I was livid. Why did she have to do that? I hated it. I didn't even know if I wanted to go there, but she still insisted so much. Like she was forcing that burden on me. And then my became our future, and she started to talk about marriage. Oh, wow. You were going to get married? I don't think we ever took it seriously. It was just something she kept mentioning. 
Not like we didn't think about that down the line, but she mostly teased me with it. But the thought suddenly scared me. I loved her, but I don't think I was ready for such a commitment, especially considering what she did. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wasn't going to let her decide such a big thing for me. I mean, she could be really pushy from time to time. Like I said, I pretty much passed college thanks to being with her, and that was partly because she was so pushy. Even if she had the best intentions, she could be abrasive from time to time. And it rained down on me at that moment. She took it upon herself to make that choice for me, what would have stopped her once we got married? What if she suddenly decided to craft my life to her needs after marriage? I knew her, she would do it thinking it was best for me, but what about my freedom? My say on the matter? So that's where you stop loving Lenore. No, no, no. I never stopped loving her, which is why it hurt so much, but you have to understand. I didn't want to wake up 40 years old working at a job I hate, just out of routine getting used to it. I wanted a break from everything for a while to put my thoughts in order, regroup myself and think carefully about what to do next. <laughs> Are you even in high school? So that's what led to you two fighting, huh? You know, the word fight makes it sound like we exchanged blows or something. It's all silly when I think back to it. Tragically silly. Maybe I was the one who started the fight, getting all defensive about not wanting to take that offer. Perhaps if I didn't overreact to her arguments about wasting this huge opportunity, maybe she wouldn't have lashed out at me this bad. It could have been avoided if I had just kept a cooler head and talked about it with her. My sister said something like that. Huh? I told you she mentioned on more than one occasion how sorry she was about the whole thing, right? Should have listened to her at the end, but instead kept pushing her. Should have kept a cool head instead of letting my jealousy take the best of me. It was her offer, not mine. Should have stopped projecting myself so much onto her. Something like that. Oh. We are quite the hotheads, you, me, and my sister. You were supposed to be the mature one, you know? Play your role correctly. <laughs> <laughs> but why didn't you come back? Did you end up hating us that much? No, not hate. It was... Did the break include us, too? No, it's just that... Remember when your sister was giving a class and you broke the window? Now you didn't want to see her for fear of being scolded? But my sister wouldn't have scolded you. But I was afraid, dead afraid, I couldn't bring myself to face her. But I faced her back then, and I was like seven at the time. Why couldn't you do it? It's not quite the same. And in perspective, no matter what reason I come up with, it'll never make sense. Everything sounds stupid when I look back, you know? Not that it makes things easier. I will never get to speak to her ever again, and it just feels beca b bad because it's stupid. I swear, you and my sister were meant for one another. We both moved on after all that, but neither had the courage to go back and say you're sorry. And like I said, berating myself over those past mistakes won't bring her back. I miss her so much, though. We were together all the time, always talking about dumb stuff. I wouldn't call my parents endless, useless, but she was the one I would always talk to. I feel her absence every day. Oh. Everything is just so quiet now. She was an amazing person. Yeah, she was an amazing person. Eh? Morning is fine and all, but we should be celebrating her life. If she was here, she would tell us that there's no fun in sulking for so long. She told you that all the time. The same way she told you to stop rubbing things in people's faces. Both figuratively and, th and literally. Uh oh. Hey, I was eight. <laughs> so let's have a toast in her honor, shall we? A toast? Yeah, let me get you a drink. A drink? Don't worry, trust me. Alright, well, we're just gonna get a sugar rush, because we don't have to put alcohol in that. Ta-da! Grab this for a sec. Okay. Ahem. 
Lenore, I know you're watching from the beyond right now as I give a drink to your little sister. It's obvious to me now that we both meant to make amends at some point, but we never got around to it. <laughs> I can't apologize to you anymore, but at the very least I can make you rest easier. So now that I'll look out for Gabby in your absence. I'll make sure Gabby grows into a fine woman just like you were. I'll always be there for her. Oh, that's nice. I'll be sure the little brat doesn't face the same problem you and I had. Hey! Wanna add anything? Um... I'll always miss her. Well, say it to me, say it to her. That's a bit... Come on, just this once. I'll always miss you. <laughs> you idiotic idiot. Arr. Hey Jill, promise me you won't be like that knucklehead that you won't keep stuff like that to yourself? Only if you promise the same to me. And promise we won't fight. I can't do that. Eh? You and I are both too thick-headed. Sooner or later we'll clash on some opinion. But what I can promise is that I won't run away like last time. We'll both cool off and talk it over like the adults we are. I'm not an adult. Let's face it, you've been more mature than I have. <laughs> hey, did you mean what you said, that you'll look after me? I'll always be here for you. I mean, I'm not Lenore, but I wouldn't dare leave my little sister alone. Jill. Hey, wasn't this a toast? Right. For Lenore, faithful sister and girlfriend. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so, about this drink. Can I drink it? Do you like it? Take a sip. It's not bad. Why not drink it then? You're, an, you're with an adult. You might as well break the alcohol taboo here and now. Alright, well, except I gave her a non-alcoholic drink. Didn't your sister give you beer once as a prank? Oh yeah, that. It was an April Fool's joke. I should have known better than when she offered me apple soda. I put the bubble I put bubble gum on all the shoes of her feet on all of her shoes in retaliation. <laughs> nice. She walked funny and my jaw hurt for the rest of the day. Yeah, but didn't you know you got my drink at that, that time? She gave me a beer and turned it <clears throat> and it turned out to be apple soda. Oh. Did you get back at her? Well, Um, okay. Hey, that's, uh... That's not sanitary. Jill? I'll tell you when you're older. Or never at all. Good call. Hey, Gabby. Do your parents know you're here? They think I'm at Claire's, actually. Who? Oh, she's my best friend at school. And this Claire knows you're using me and her as an excuse, right? Of course, how would she cover me for me otherwise? True. Will you go to her house afterwards? To be honest, I didn't think that far. Maybe I will. I do live in another district, but Claire doesn't live close by, so... Hmm. Well, it can't be helped. I live nearby and the streets aren't exactly safe at night. Why not stay with me tonight? Are you sure? I don't live in a mansion, but I'd say it's comfy enough if he's to spend the night. Sure, I'd love to stay with you. Great. Hey, does your dad still have that bakery? His bread was really good. He opened a second branch last year. So he's looking to expand. <laughs> bakery. Expanding. I think he's got into a partnership with a friend in the Motor District. I saw an opportunity after realizing the Motor District has almost no bakeries. I still remember when your sister introduced me to him. He started shouting, I knew it. <laughs> Mark one for daddy. I think he had this bet with an acquaintance of his ever, saw you. ever since my sister was 12 years old or so. <laughs> he bet a beer on whether he was right or not. 
That beer bottle is still in the fridge, even it's even labeled Sweet Victory. That is hilarious. Your mom and the Lenore never made up, did they? Oh. Sigh. I guess that one wasn't as simple as said too many things argument. Mom was always obsessed with the high society and her circle of friends. And a lesbian daughter was a no-no. God. Even in the future? I'm still on my sister's side for that one, though. Mom didn't reject her because she herself... She did it because her friends were, oh. Yeah, that... That is not cool. How did she react to her death? Don't know, Mom and Dad broke up two years ago. They did? They never got married, so there was no proper divorce. I haven't seen her since. August, I think. Did you two fight too? No, she just hasn't shown up. Must have felt alone, huh? I've been there. A bit, but I'm not alone anymore. Oh, there was going to be a party here. Oh, Alma. Party. A small New Year's celebration. Want to stay for it? I don't want a kid to burden. Don't worry, you won't. you only get a cola for the night, though. No alcohol. It'll give us time to catch up even more. I can introduce you to some friends. Are you in? If you don't mind me. Great. Hey Alma, come here. There's someone I want to introduce you to. Huh. Did I just get to the end of the game? Oh, I did. Cyberpunk bartender, action, staff. So I know this game has several endings, and it really encourages multiple playthroughs, and my phone is ringing. Go figure. I'll call him back later. Michael Kelly, the man who made this music. Good job. Anyway, this game... Uh, exactly. It's weird to say that I like this more than Doki Doki Literature Club since I like played Doki Doki Literature Club all the way through without stopping and I stopped and started this play. But to be fair, it's longer by pretty wide margin. Uh, feels more complete as a game, which is probably why I like it more. Even though Doki Doki Literature Club got that really visceral reaction with some of the stuff that they did. That conversation between Jill and Alma, where Alma was behind the bar and Jill was just talking, really resonated with me, and still my, uh, probably my favorite part of the game. Oh, special thanks to everyone who pre-ordered, you right there. Mom, Dad, family, and friends. Made in Game Maker Studio by Yo-Yo Games. Oh, but yeah, this game is super cool. I might, uh, if there's like a best possible ending, depending on how different it is, I might try to play the game again and get it. Otherwise, I'm just going to look at the other ones online. Like, I, I imagined that there's a bad ending if you don't make rent. At least I think that's what it is. I imagine that would be the trigger for a bad ending. And I guess the bunch of character specific endings that you have to do specific things at specific points in time for that I didn't really look up because I just wanted to do. Did you have fun? Yes, this was a cool game. This is an interesting slice of life. Yep, I also got. I also got to meet it. Oh, wait. Why did you have a boss hug you though? Oh. This is just, she's kind of that kind of person. Now let's sleep, you were dozing off back there.
You're right, good night, Jail. Alright. Cool. We'll play some more tomorrow. Good night. Alrighty. I thought the Did You Have Fun was directed at us, the players. To which I say yes, this was super interesting. I like this game quite a bit. And even though there's not like a direct plot line to follow all the way through or anything, Jill did actually still exhibit growth as a person, which is nice. And she was super likable, and her plight was fascinating. Again, that bit that I've claimed is my favorite part seemed really, really human. Are you going to take me back to the title screen, or is it just going to sit here? There we go. Friday, January 15th. Oh man, post credit scene. What the? I tried for an hour to convince him it's a bad idea, and I finally got to him. He finally moved to the bedroom, and it turns. Oh god. What is happening? I got the. No, okay. So, Dorothy can see him too? I once saw a guy in a hospital, or see her, why'd I say him? I wonder if it's the same guy. I have enough problems with just one, you know. Just one what? Eh, yeah, um... <laughs> oh, I guess Dorothy can't see her. I thought, okay, just listening to one of your anecdotes. Told me about the neo Taiwana thing and now this. Don't you have a more subdued story? <laughs> so, I kind of wish we got to figure out what the deal with her was, because as far as I know, it's just it's weird. Well. Like, there ha- oh. Oh, okay. Wish granted. This must be her. Last time I spoke with my mom, I asked her the story of her daughter. Turns out her name was Anna. Huh. And now you pretend it's a surprise? I did kind of suspect that when she called Dorothy Becky. Quiet, you. She fought against nanomachine rejection for most of her life. She even lost a girlfriend that she made in the hospital to that same sickness. Oh. Apparently sometime after she got out of treatment, a truck- Oh my god! That is not cool. But even then, she was amazing. She was? Eh? Yeah, she kept up her studies while still in the hospital. She was a self-taught honor student. Not only that, but she also ranked among the top five candidates in at least three college admission exams. She also played the piano and the guitar. Well, being confined to a room does that, I guess. I mean, fully able-bodied people can barely do half of that. But she practically accomplished all that by herself. And she also beat nanomachine rejection, a disease that only 2% of humans suffer and even less survive. It took a trucking truck to take her down. She was great, and you think I'm sort of like her sister. Heh, <laughs> silly Becky. Did you say something? I did not. Weird, I swear I heard someone call me silly Becky. Huh? Come again? It's not uncommon for me to hear stuff from far away. I think I heard it nearby, but you're the only one nearby that knows my real name, so it was weird. Oh well. As I was saying... Oh god. Sunday, August 27th. Wow! I guess this is where we part ways, huh? Sadly, I'm bound to this city. I can only falsify my identity effectively around here. I really want to thank you, Chief, for the second chance you gave me. If we were to ever cross, pass, cross paths again, I... 
<laughs> Gil, we're leaving for like a week and a half. Don't be so dramatic. But I... And you're taking care of my apartment. We will cross paths, because I live there. The time you spent setting up a useless farewell could be used asking me things about the place. Like where the switches and valves are. But I already know they're in that control panel you made. But I like talking about that control panel, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Speaking of obsessive likes, Jill, stop calling Armitage. She's taking care of your four ball just fine. I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about me. I've never been away from four this long. I don't know what I'll do. You'll do just fine. You did pretty well for at least 25 years before finding him. Yes, but. We're leaving! Oh, yeah, before I forget. Oh, God. You what? You what? <laughs> If he wants to bring his new girlfriend over, or whatever here, I want him to be ready. Stay away from my room. I have my Emoto there. I don't want their eyes to get soiled. Emo who? Little sister. And just save little sister. Yeah, whatever. First stop, Panama. Here you can save heart data. Loading heart data from the title screen or the bar will let you start over from day one while keeping your items and money. Aw, that's awesome. Alright. So there is a new game plus. I think, I'm pretty sure that was the best, or I think that was the good ending. Was, uh... Aw! Oh, Aw, oh, that's awesome! Gabby's there with her now. That's cool. Alright, well. This game was super fun. I liked it a lot. Jill was a very likable character and all the wacky other characters I enjoyed for the most part. There were only a couple people that I was like, ugh, can't deal with you. And I'm sure if I would were to, you know, just be a little more open-minded in another playthrough I could come around on them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you for watching, and as always, follow me to Apex.